Welcome to the podium live, I'm Vincent Purvis. Today we have national, no, how do you say it? NEFL, Nordic, yeah. Northern yep, European yep. Football <laughs> League champion and Maple League champion from Finland, head coach uh, Q Floyd. What's going on, Q? What's going on, Purvis? Glad to have, I'm glad you had me on the show. I'm sorry I messed up the whole NEFL thing, but the, the point is, this man is winning championships in a national. That's the point, right? Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Q, we just want to ask you a couple of questions today. But first, let's just get into what you just did recently. Kind of give us a rundown of what happened last year with you and the Helsinki Roosters and how you guys won two international championships and how the team progressed only losing the one game this season. Mm. Um. Well, obviously, yeah, like you said, uh, you know, I signed with the Roosters uh, – in the off season, and uh, you know, coming into it, you know, it was a lot of people kind of worried because uh, they lost to, you know, their previous head coach, who's actually not a head coach again now. Uh, a lot of people were kind of just not really giving us a chance necessarily to win the win the Maple League. Um, but you know, we had a great group of guys. Our coach staff was amazing. Those guys put in a lot of work, and uh, you know, we just all came together with one accord and uh, just wanted to win. And it just so happens we our season started a little earlier than everybody else was playing in the NFL, and uh, you know we had we had two I think uh, good games against Uppsala, and then we we met Carlstad, and you know that was an amazing game if anybody had a chance to watch it. You know it was a is what you call a classic championship game, and um, that just kind of started us up for our season. And uh, you know these games go by fast, you know during the summertime, and it seems like you know we were winning, 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 and we got to six games, and you know. It was six and one, I believe. Um, you know, and only had one loss, and the guys, you know, stayed healthy all season. They played great all season, and uh, you know, we won the championship. So uh, it was a great season. It actually went by pretty fast, um, but I had a good time. The guys worked hard. The coaches worked hard. So uh, it was a great year, man. All right, Coach Floyd, tell us a little bit about how you came to become a head coach for one of the best teams in Europe. Like, what's your journey? How'd you end up? From where, from the United States to come playing in Europe and now coaching in Europe as well. Uh, actually, um, I, I'll try to make it as short as I can. Uh, I actually went. To time. No rush, man. We live. People want to hear <laughs> stories. That's what this is for. Yeah, I actually went to college with the guy from um, from Finland. Um, in our in our graduation night, he asked me kind of, you know, what are you gonna do after foot, you know, after college now? And I kind of was just thinking, you know, arena ball stuff like that. And he was like, well, you know, there's a league in Finland. Um, I can send you a highlight tape. You know, back then we were still sending, you know, tapes. Hey. Yeah, yeah. We were still okay. sending these. We didn't have huddle and all that stuff. <laughs> uh, so he got me in contact with a few teams. And um, I ended up in Helsinki with the Helsinki 69ers. Um, was with those guys for like six years uh, playing and then coached defense coordinator in 2015. And uh, kind of from there, you, you know, I feel like coaches aren't really made. They're born. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? You just got to have that natural – uh, thing to want to like develop players and want to help players and want to teach. And that's pretty much what I did the whole time I was at uh, the 69ers. And uh, I think my reputation uh, for, for knowing football and, and knowing about winning probably kind of swayed me to uh, get the head coach of the, of the Roosters job, and, which I actually had no idea that Yarmo would pick me. Um, but I was surprised. I, I'm glad he did, you know, because it was a great year. But um you know, coaching is is has been fun. It's, it's something I think that a lot of players do naturally, um, without even thinking about it. And uh, for me, I just so happened to be lucky and do it in Finland. So um, it was it was nice. It was a good ride. But uh, Q, you're you're still a young man, a young <laughs> physical man. I mean, we're just throwing it out there. I mean, if it was called upon you, like next season, someone was like, you know what, strap up, man. What what you gonna do? Would you be able to? Ooh, would I be able to? Uh, yeah, I, I I feel like I still got some juice, you know, left, but it would have to make sense. Um, I feel like I've done everything uh, career-wise that I wanted to do playing. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I won a few championships playing. Uh, now I'm winning two coaching. Uh, it's not much more I need to prove to myself or anybody else. Uh, if I did play, it would just be, you know, just to, just to see if I still got it and just to be out there, with, you know, with some of my friends or something. But, uh yeah, you know, it's, I always keep a pair of cleats ready. Just so. <laughs> That's the craziest thing about coaching in Europe is uh, you guys, you come over to play, 
Um, like you said, coaches are born, not made. If you constantly are coaching while you're over here in Europe, eventually you become a coach. Now, the, the rub is a lot of guys are player coaches. When, when do you think is the right time for a player to say, you know what, I can affect more people as a coach than playing my best as a player? What, when do you think? I'm just asking you because you've been there. Um, I think you have to just kind of be real with yourself about um, – about what can you offer the team? Like you said, uh, to I, I've seen people try to be coaches and, and players at the same time. I've done it. It's, it's one of the hardest things to do because uh, as a player, you're passionate, you're emotional during the game. You know, as coaches are emotional too, um, but we have to think, you know, two or three plays down the line. Uh, when you're playing, you can't do that really. You know what I mean? So um, I think I got to my point was actually my grandma. My grandma was like uh, – uh, she seen that I had broke my wrist and she was like, well, baby, I think it's time for you to stop playing now. You know, <laughs> like, So, um, yeah, she kind of had a part to do in it too. And then it's just, you know, I just felt like coaching, I would have more fun uh, coaching now, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, playing was, was great, but then you got to kind of listen to your body too. And your body will let you know, like, Hey, you know, I, I need a little rest. So I just listened to my body and a little bit of my grandma and I just decided to coach then. Uh, just a little note for anybody watching this. Uh, when when Floyd says, listen to your body, he's not an old guy, but yeah. he's been a very physical game for a very long time. Yeah. Um, one thing I think a lot of European players don't understand when a 30-something-year-old American says, oh, I'm too old, they're like, oh, we have 30-year-old players. A lot of 30-year-old players in Europe have only been playing for 10 years, 15 years tops, you know? Yeah. Most Americans who have been who reach 30 to 32 years of age have been playing for almost 20 to 25 years. Yeah. That's a long time to play American football. Yeah. Time to play, man. Long time. And so uh, moving on, um, let's talk about the Roosters. Um, they're kind of a myth in Europe. Like people talk about the Roosters. They're controlling Finland. They're just want, you guys just won the sixth straight championship in Finland. What was it like being a part of that organization? Kind of go through a little bit of, like, what it was like being on that team in that organization, how it felt to be a part of that. Um, you know what? It, it reminded me of my college days uh, at Missouri Valley. Um, it was real organized. You know, we, we were 15 minutes early to pretty much everything. Uh, it wasn't so much like that, you know, with the Roosters, every, every meeting and every, you know, but we tried to be as efficient and as constant as we could be. Uh, I mean, the organization, the board members, they take care of everything and they make it easy for you just to be able to coach. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's what I wanted more than anything, to, to to not have to do so much admin work and, and things like that. I just wanted to be able to focus on the team. And um, they did everything possible to uh, to make me feel comfortable to do that. And uh, the Roosters actually uh, organization, man, you can see, like if you, if you come to a practice, I mean, you can see these guys work hard. Um, I think a lot of teams in Finland could also uh, – be like that if they just take the time to invest in the coaches and uh and I don't mean American coaches, I mean invest in their local coaches and, and get those guys going to, you know, coaching camps and learning how to work out players in the all season compared to working out players during the season. You know, a lot of that stuff is very important. I mean, we had a physio uh doctor, we had a a, a regular doctor. I mean, like these guys got taken care of like, you know, to the to the top level you want. Um we didn't have any major injuries um, throughout the season, which is another reason why I think we won so much um, because we could constantly get work done with the guys who were actually going to be in there in the game. Um, but the organization itself, they treated me good. Um, we did exactly what we planned to do, and that was to win uh, as many games as we could. We, we luckily got – I won't say luckily, but we uh, we got two championships off of it, and uh, it was a good – you know, I would, I would love – I would say I would love to coach for them again uh, one day in the future. Uh, but this first ride was was nice. It was it was it was everything that I wanted it to be. Okay, so um, you said you even played for like six years in Finland. You've coached in Finland. You've played in Finland. You've been there for a long time. Tell us a little bit about how you see the development of the sport. I mean, now they're playing games on TV in Finland, so it's definitely grown. But how's it grown since you've seen it? Since you first went over there, um, it's grown a lot actually. Uh, from the the kids level on up. Um, I think the Maple League used to be a little stronger when I first got here, um, when they had the uh, three American import rule. Uh, you know, that all those guys have been on the field at one time, so obviously scores are higher 
uh, it was a lot more exciting than it is uh, somewhat now. Um, but as far as the kids, I mean, that's where it starts. That if you want to, if you want to keep a league going for years, that's what you have to focus on. You know, the U seventeen, U fifteen, uh, the younger guys, you, the younger kids. You have to focus on them. And uh, I think that's got a lot better since I've been coming to Finland. Um, I mean, some of these youth teams, these guys are, you know, they're starting earlier than their coaches started, you know, playing football. So they're obviously a, a panning out to be uh, better players uh, than their coaches probably have been. And I think, uh, you know, if, if, if with a lot more marketing and uh, some right people in, in a few positions, I think uh, it'll continue to grow. Um, but like I said, it's, it's, it's been a nice seven, eight times that I've came and, and the football is, 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 is up there. Uh, I would say, you know, Germany, uh, Austria, Finland is right. You know, it's right there. So, um, so what you're saying is Austria, Germany, come at me, bro. <laughs> Bruce is saying, "Come at no, I'll, you're not speaking to Bruce, but <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm open to talks to to anybody, you know, right now. Um, but yeah, you know, it, it, the the game there is is definitely improved um, every year. So hopefully, it'll, it'll continue to do that. Well, that's great. Um, definitely think Finland's going to be one of the best countries of playing American football in the future as well. Mm-hmm. But let let's leave football to the side a little bit. I mean, you're, a, I want to say. Helsinki area expert, right? You spend a yeah. lot of time in Helsinki. Yeah. What's life like out there outside of football? Like, what is the culture like? Um, a little bit of the nightlife, not too many details, man. You know, we try to keep this G rated, but you no, know, what's it like out there? Uh, Helsinki, man, you know what? Uh, it, it, it's one of those places where it's a lot of people, it's a lot of stuff going on, and you gotta just have to find your way in it, you know. Um, it's it's been a it's treated me great. Um, I met a lot of great people. I won't just say friends, but some of these people are like family to me. And um, the culture is nice. You know, learning the languages is is is, is its own world. You know, um, can you give us a little bit of Finnish, man. Do I know a little bit of Finnish? Yeah, yeah a, a, a little bit. <laughs> do us a sentence or two. Let the world know. A sentence or two. I don't know if I can do a sentence or two, but uh, I'll just say the normal, like you know, everybody else say mitakulu. Uh, Ooh, I'll wow. leave it right there. I'm not gonna let you bait me. This right <laughs> I tried. I tried. Uh, but um, the city itself is beautiful. Um, it's a lot of people, uh, a lot to see. I spend a lot of time there, and uh, Helsinki is like my my my. I won't say my my first home, but it's close. You know, I spent a lot of years there. You kind of start getting used to being places and, and being there. So um, the journey that I had there was an amazing one, and I, and I love all the people that that's that's helped me along the way there. Um, but Helsinki is, is, is it, man. It's the city. For all the imports that's never been there, think about playing. If you go anywhere in Finland, make sure it's close to Helsinki. All right. So, Coach Q. Floyd, uh, you're no longer with the Helsinki Roosters. Uh, you're back in the States, back in Atlanta, living the good life with the <laughs> snowing. It's snowing out here in Finland right now. Mm. Uh, what are your plans looking like for next season? you have any – certain destinations you're targeting or you just kind of filled in offers? What's going on with you, man? Well, right now, uh, I'm just still enjoying this championship, man. Uh, for, for you guys that don't know the 2017 Maple League championship, that's, yeah. I'm still in, <laughs> I'm still enjoying that, man. You know, I, I have talked to uh, some teams, um, but I'm not making any decision uh, right, right now. You know, I still want to enjoy what we just did. It was a long six months, uh, seven months. So um, right now, there is no no news or anything like that. I'm just enjoying being home, you know, around my family and friends and, and everybody I care about. So um, as far as the future, I guess we'll, we'll find out, you know, soon. So, All right. So let, let me get into a little proactive with you. Um, you're on the market as a coach, so a lot of people would like to understand what kind of coach is Q Floyd? Give us a little bit of a rundown of, how how you kind of transform your players into your philosophy and your coaching style? Like, what do you bring as a coach when you are doing that? Um, I think more than anything, I think passion um, for the players. I mean, like you say, I'm 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 not too many years away from from what they're going through, the running, the the, the pain, the body aches. Um, so I understand what these guys are going through, and and I try to relate that as as closely as possible as I can as a coach. Um, you know, I'm an aggressive guy when I was playing, uh, somewhat violent, 
Um, so that's what I expect from, you know, the teams that I play with, you know, what I coach with. Um, whether it's offense or defense, I want to dominate no matter what. Like with friends, you know, off the field, uh, away from practice, you know, with my players. But when it's when it's practice time, they know I'm serious now. And uh, I think you have to be that way, you know. Like uh, I, I see the vision, and I have to push them as as far as they can possibly go um, to to be better players. You know, sometimes I think players are they make plays. You know, it's like making a, a four yard loss. But at the end of the day, it could have been a seven-yard loss. You know, I'm that coach. Like, okay. I made a great play, but it could have been a better play. You know what I mean? So, you know, I think I, if more than anything, I try to, you know, push those guys and motivate, um, which is – I'm big on motivation. Um, just mentally getting guys prepared because that's half the battle too. So, I think if anything, is more passionate uh, motivation, um, you know, things around that rim. Okay. So, last question for you, Coach. Um Let's just talk uh, hypothetical, like long term. When when it's all said and done, if it ever does get all said and done, what what would you like your legacy to be? Like when people think about Q Floyd, the coach, the player, like what what would you like people to remember you as? Like what's your like plan if you have one? Um, you know, I guess more than anything, I, I just would, would would want them to remember that that he was an exciting player person um when he's on the field he gives his all uh playmaker um because I, I feel like if you're not making plays then you're not you're not worth anything pretty much it's a lot of people that's on the field that that that's just there you know they expect everybody else to make the plays and they they just want to be around it uh I was one of those guys who I wanted every single tackle I wanted every single pass breakup I wanted every single sack and uh, because that's just the way I've been coached and the way I've been taught. Um, but if anything, I would I would want people to remember that he was just, you know, a hard-nosed, aggressive, nice guy off the field. Um, but on the field, he, he'll give you everything he got. Um, so more than anything, probably that. What about your coaching legacy? Um, you coach, coaching le- le- legacy, I mean, the short one that I have right now, uh, I just want people to remember that, that, he won, you know, a lot of people, like I said, a lot of people didn't, didn't give us a chance. And, and, um, you know, I think with the Roosters, we did something that was great. Um, they have had great years before this, but I think this year was special, um, with the group of guys that I had. So, um, for his legacy as a coach, I just want people to remember that he will, he will make you run gashers. Even <laughs> if you are undefeated, you still are running gashers. <laughs> uh, so, I'm always, you know, on to the next game. I always want to be one and over. So, all right, Coach Q Floyd, appreciate you talking to us on the podium today. Good luck with you in the future, wherever you land, and have a great day, man. Hey, thank you, Purvis. And that's it. All right, in there.